If your idea of packing for a trip is staying up late the night before you leave and seeing just how much you can cram into your suitcase before the zipper breaks, stay tuned for seven tips that will help you master the art of packing. Packing your suitcase for your trip may not be the thing you're most looking forward to on your next vacation, but if you neglect this important step and don't plan properly, you could find yourself without the things you need during your trip, or even worse, maybe carrying around extra pounds that you don't need. Now, I'm not what you'd call a light packer. Some of my fellow travel pros are, and they can live out of a carry-on for an entire week, but that's just not me. I applaud them for it. but. I'm not the type of traveler that wants to wash clothes or really do much of anything on my vacation other than explore. But all that said, I was raised and still live by the rule that you carry what you pack. And if you're going on a trip where you're going to be going from hotel to hotel or place to place around the course of your vacation, then you'll want to keep that in mind when you're packing. Now, I'm not here to judge you know, how much you pack or what you carry, um, but these tips will help you wherever you fall on the packing spectrum. So let's get started with the seven tips for smart packing. Tip number one, don't start with the suitcase. You might be tempted to pick a suitcase and start a fill-in, but this can lead to either packing more than you need just to fill space or realizing you don't have enough room halfway through packing. Start with what you need for your trip and that will help inform the size of suitcase you need. I start by thinking through my itinerary day by day. So think about what you're gonna do and pack for that. Tip number two, start with the essentials, then build. First things first, underwear. This is a no-brainer. What, you don't wear underwear? Well, you'll still likely need socks or have other undergarment needs. So pull out the number of pairs of underwear, bras, whatever you need, and fold them into a nice pile. Personal care items. This is the stuff you can, cannot leave home without. These things include subscription pills, sleep aids, toothbrush, makeup, sunscreen, anything like that. Whatever it is that you have to take, one on hand for emergencies or just can't live without. I'm a believer in Ziploc bags and pill organizers. Let me take a tangent into this for a minute here. So why Ziploc bags? They keep things from leaking. Once you've used up what's inside of them, they fold and pack nicely so you can use them on the next trip. And they're really cheap. Pill organizers come in handy too because if you're doing your vacation right, you won't be keeping track of what meds you're taking and what day it is even. The organizer along with your phone, calendar reminders can help you stay on track. I take vitamin C twice a day, particularly when I travel to keep my immune system in running order. If you're going to a beach, don't forget a swimsuit or two or three. Those count as your essential items. Tip number three, pack by outfit, not by individual piece. Are you going somewhere for five days? You'll need seven outfits. Why seven? Because you never know when one will get wet, soiled, or otherwise disabled. I'm a clumsy person. I literally fall at least once on every single trip. This can lead to torn pant legs or scraped sleeves, blood stains. Um, it's always good to have a backup or two. If you're not clumsy, think about flight cancellations. If you need to stay an extra day, it will be nice to have that one extra set of clean clothes to help soothe some of your frustration. Another reason I say seven outfits for five days is because you'll likely go out at least one night for a nice dinner or, or event. This dressy outfit can also count as your extra outfit. I lay out my clothes, buy outfits, and adjust if needed. For example, maybe I want to swap out a skirt for shorts or add a jacket if I think it might get chilly at night. Once you have all of your outfits nailed down, it's time to start packing them. Now I roll everything. This helps prevent wrinkles. Um, it also helps condense everything so you can maximize your space. Packing cubes are another advantage. I learned this tip from my friend who's a flight attendant. These came from e-bags, but you can use anything similar as long as they're not the hard case type because they need to be able to be squishy and, and easily compress. Now roll each outfit, pack it in a cube, except for one important exception, and that is tip number four. Pack your plane home trip outfits separately. 
So why do you pack your, your trip home outfit separately? There are a couple benefits for doing this. First, it reduces the clutter and the mental load of having to worry about an outfit that you don't need until your trip is over. Second, it's psychological. Who wants to be thinking of and staring at the outfit they're going to wear home all week long when you're trying to have fun on your vacation? Pull it out, put it out of sight, out of mind by packing it in its own cube. Tip number five, streamline your shoes. Now that you have all of your essential items taken care of and all of your outfits are packed, it's time to focus on your feet. Overpacking shoes. This is probably the biggest mistake I see people make. There is no bigger waste of space than shoes. They're clunky, often heavy, and you won't wear half the shoes you think you need for your trip. Now I will say that part of being shoe smart is having shoes that serve multiple purposes. I have my favorites, you'll have yours. I'm not endorsing one over the other, but I'll tell you how I personally solve the dilemma of how many shoes to pack. First, a general rule, if you can, pack two pairs, one on your feet and one in your bag. I don't always follow this rule because number one, I have very bad feet, recurring plantar fasciitis and the clumsiness problem I mentioned before. And number two, I often take trips that include adventure that require specialty shoes. What do I mean by specialty shoes? This means any casual shoe that you wouldn't normally wear at home, like a water shoe maybe, or a hiking shoe, or um, a snow boot, something like that. So for the purposes of this pack, which is a beach trip, I'm gonna pack some water slash hiking shoes, and they are my favorite pair of Keens. Plus I'll include a pair of tennis shoes because I know I'll be playing tennis on this trip. And that's it. From my trip to Ireland recently, where um, I knew I'd be riding a bike, doing city stuff, hiking, all of that kind of thing, I packed three pair of shoes, and I tried to get it down to two, but I was worried, and it turns out rightfully so, that I'd need to pack a, a dry pair for um, any rainstorms, which are very frequent in Ireland. Packing your shoes last is also important because you can't match your outfits to your shoes. So going to a nice evening out and wanna wear heels, this is where you can consider that maybe that's that specialty need and throw it into your bag. And when I say throw it into your bag, I mean gently place it in a bag. <laughs> important, this isn't an e-bag situation. For one thing, most shoes won't fit in an e-bag, but um, I did find these cool shoe bags at Ikea. If you don't have these though, there are a lot of other options you can use. A purse bag, a plastic bag from your favorite box store, or even an old pillowcase. The point is you don't want your shoes soiling your nicely packed outfits. Tip number six, odds and ends. So don't forget, if you're a neat freak like me, pack a dirty clothes bag. Also consider packing your trip home or that extra outfit in a carry-on rather than your check bag. Another thing, if you're an avid reader, put your extra books in your main suitcase to save space in your carry-on. If you have activity-based items like snorkel gear, be sure to save space for it. One more tip to keep in mind, don't overpack on things you can easily get at the location. What do I mean by this? That bulky hair dryer, a beach towel, Soap. These are things most hotels will have on hand, so don't bother packing them. Worst comes to worst and they don't have it at the hotel, then you'll be able to pick it up at a local Walmart or, or convenience store. Tip number seven, keep it simple in your carry-on. If you've done a good job starting with your main or check bag, you shouldn't have too much left for your carry-on, quite honestly. That said, there are some carry-on essentials that I'd recommend. First, an empty water bottle. Most airports will have a water filling station. This will save you a lot of money on what you'd spend on water at the airport. Think like $5 a bottle, maybe more. Plus, if you're going somewhere like a national park in the United States, you can keep filling it your whole trip for free. Number two, book or entertainment device. If you have a flight that's over an hour, chances are you'll want something to distract you from the turbulence, the screaming baby, etc. Number three, power cables and batteries. I always travel with a phone charger battery pack and pre-download my movie or streaming shows because you just can't count on Wi-Fi. I also recommend you pack any emergency pills you might need. Um, what I always like to have on hand is ibuprofen and Benadryl, just in case. The next thing I would recommend you keep in your carry-on are your travel documents. 
passports, printouts of confirmations, that type of thing, just in case your checked luggage gets lost. Finally, don't forget that extra outfit we talked about. Remember that travel home outfit? If you have room, it's a good idea to pack it in your carry-on, including underwear, in case things go south with your plans. Airlines seem to lose luggage a lot lately. So that's it, you're ready to go. Not too hard, right? Hopefully this list was helpful, even for the most unorganized of us. If you remember nothing else, I hope it's this. You spend a lot of time, money, and energy planning for your trip. Don't fail to plan how you pack. This will set you up for success. Safe travel, happy voyages, and never, ever, ever stop exploring.